So this video will discuss problem number four from the 2023 AP Stats exam. This was a question from 2023 that dealt with inference. A lot of given information at the front end of this one. So medical researcher completed a study comparing an omega-3 fatty acid supplement to a placebo in the treatment of irritability in patients with a certain condition. We've got 19 patients with the medical condition that volunteered to participate. The study was conducted using the following weekly schedule. So during the first week, each patient is going to be randomly assigned either the placebo or the omega-3 supplement. Week two, they're going to not do anything because they want the effects of whatever was taken during week one to completely wear off. Week three, they're going to take the opposite treatment that they had during week one. At the end of week one and week three, the patient's irritability is going to be scored on a scale of one to 10, zero, no irritability, 10, highest level of irritability. For each patient, the two ir irritability scores and the difference in their scores, placebo minus omega-3, that's important for what we do in a little bit, we're gonna be recorded. The results are summarized in the table and box plots. So here those are. So they've got the mean irritability score for each of the treatments and then also the difference between the means. Um, they've got the standard deviation for each and then the standard deviation of the difference. They've got a box plot showing omega-3 and placebo. They've also got a separate box plot showing the difference in irritability score placebo minus omega-3. Researcher claims the omega-3 supplement will decrease the mean irritability score of all patients with the medical condition, similar to volunteers who participated in the study. So they're trying to make a judgment about the full population based on the 19 individuals from this study. Is there convincing statistical evidence to support the researcher's claim at the significance level of 0.05? Complete the appropriate inference procedure to support your answer. Now, if you've practiced a decent number of these inference problems, you'll realize that they typically don't have multiple parts to them, right? It's, it's one task and you are going to have to make sure that you do enough within your work for that one task to squeeze out a, a good score for that particular problem. So if you're familiar with the, the four step process, state plan do conclude, it's a pretty rigid process that gets all of the information that needs to be in your work to receive full credit for one of these inference problems. Uh, it gets all those things into your work at some point. So that's what you'll see I've, I've done over on the left here. I've labeled my stating portion of the problem. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a judgment about a population mean, and that population mean would be the mean difference in the irritability score for all people with the medical condition. The null hypothesis would be that there is no difference in irritability from placebo to uh, the omega-3 supplement. The alternative, now here's where the here's where noticing the direction of the subtraction is important, placebo minus omega-3. Well, if they were more irritable when they took the placebo than they were when they took the omega-3, this number right here should be the higher of these two values. And that would mean that our mean difference is going to be positive. So that would be our alternative. I also denoted some of the other information. They've given you some stuff that you don't actually need here. And, and that's, I guess, by intention, by the problem writers, you don't need, this is a matched pairs situation, right? We want to intentionally take the difference of person one with the placebo minus person one with the omega-3. We don't want to take a difference of person one with person 17, right? So we don't actually need this box plot. We don't actually need anything in the top two rows of the table, we just need, I guess we don't even need this box plot. We need what's here. I guess we will need this box plot for one task in just a few minutes. Uh, but this is the mean that we're gonna use for our sample. This is the sample standard deviation that we're gonna use. We have a sample size of 19. Now, a situation where we don't have access to a population standard deviation, and this is definitely not one, is going to require for us to use a t distribution rather than a normal distribution and we have to make sure we use the appropriate measure for degrees of freedom and that would be one less than the sample size and then i also like to specify restate my significance level now the planning portion of this is where i've always urged my students to name the procedure that you're using 
So this is a one sample, and this is a little weird because it seems like we have two samples, right? We have the placebo, and then we have the, tr the, uh, tr the actual treatment, the active ingredient treatment, the omega-3. But we're intentionally taking a difference prior to us doing any of our work. So this would be a one sample t-test for a population mean. You have to make sure you've identified how the randomness within the problem is attained. And in this case, it's the random assignment week one versus week three for the active ingredient treatment. There needs to be independence. Uh, and for independence, you're normally going to be checking the 10% condition. Sample size here is more than likely less than 10% of all people with the medical condition. When you do have independence, that gives you the opportunity to do your standard error calculation. So this is just a formula from the formula sheet found on the second page of it. I'm taking the standard deviation from the sample, dividing by the square root of the sample size. And there are differing formulas in that same column of the formula sheet for dealing with proportions. And then the last thing that we need to make sure that we do that gives us the green light to do the concluding steps, we have to make sure that there's some sort of argument that we can use to argue that we're approximately normal in shape for our sampling distribution. They don't tell us that in this situation. So here's where I came back and I looked at this box plot and I said, well, this box plot is approximately symmetric with no major skewness or obvious outliers. And that's the argument that I used to try to say, okay, it seems like our sampling distribution for our sample mean is going to be approximately normal in shape. Next, we've got a calculation to do. So I need my t-score. So that would be the sample mean minus the null hypothesis mean divided by that standard error measure that we computed back in the, on the prior screen. That gives me a t-score of 3.139. I draw my t-distribution. I put my t-score that I just determined on that t-distribution and I'm looking for a p-value that is going to represent the area above and that's due to what we said back here for our alternative. We're trying to find the probability that our difference of mean difference, mean difference, say that the right way, mean difference is greater than zero. And so the inequality in my alternative hypothesis tells me I'm looking for the area of this upper tail. I use the calculator to determine my p-value. Since that p-value is definitely less than alpha and explicitly making that comparison has to be something else that happens within your work, we do have significant evidence suggesting that the omega-3 treatment lowers irritability in people with this medical condition. Um, I didn't say lowers it more than taking a placebo. Placebo has no active ingredient, right? So introducing this supplement into your your diet into your daily regimen if you have this medical condition does seem like it's going to lower irritability with your conclusion it has to be in context and you want to make sure you use wording that is non-definitive so my go-to word is always this one i have evidence from this study suggesting that this is the case i haven't definitively proven that it is the case but that is the 2023 FRQ on inference.